I woke up one day and I realized I need a V-twin engine. But without a milling machine or a lathe, this project seemed impossible. That's when I turned to the one tool I did have, my 3D printer. So I went online thinking someone got to have done this before. But all I could find was air engines. And I absolutely hate them. So I had to do it. First of all, let's start with the crankshaft. Y'all know I'm a master welder. Bruh. What the hell? But this time, I chose to make a 3D printed one. This being the part that withstands all the forces that this engine produces, decided to print it out of the strongest material I could get my hands on. PA12 CF15 or carbon fiber reinforced nylon. 50 mm stroke, connecting rod strong enough to hold my whole body weight and 6204Z main bearings, everything press fitted together and installed in a split style crankcase just like the real engines have. With the crankshaft and crankcase out of the way, it's now time to start working on the cylinders. And for that, I'm gonna use this, a 50mm PVC pipe that's gonna act like a cylinder sleeve, press fitted inside the PLA plus cylinder body and cut to length. Now that we have our cylinders done, it's time to play a game. Who's that Pokemon? You are right, it's an O-ring, and that's exactly what I'm gonna use for compression rings. Put that around the 3D printed PLA Plus piston, and there we have it, two pistons that are ready to make some power. Next up we have the heads, printed out of PET G for better heat resistance, with aluminium inserts for each of the valve ports. I chose to make the valves out of these wood screws that I cut to length and turned into these really good looking valves. As you can tell both the intake and the exhaust ports are lapped to ensure a better compression sealing. We have everything here ready to be installed. As you can tell I already installed the pistons. I've also put together the head with the springs on the valves and the spark plug. I also marked everything on the crankcase so I don't have to guess where the piston is when I'm gonna do the timing. So we have top dead center on the first cylinder, second cylinder, bottom dead center for the first cylinder and bottom dead center for the second one. This is gonna be the ignition 15 degrees before top dead center. But I think for safety I'm gonna start at top dead center first so we don't have any explosion and anything weird. So I got the studs installed, I oiled up the pistons and the cylinders to make sure everything goes smooth when we put them together. While I do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, GLC 3DP. Whether you're a hobbyist, an engineer or running a startup, GLC 3DP makes professional manufacturing accessible to everyone. They offer high quality 3D printing with dozens of material options, from resin to flexible transparent plastic with super fine details and industrial grade level accuracy. But that's not all. They also provide CNC machining services. So whether you need precision milled metal parts or complex prototypes, they've got you covered. Their website is easy to use, you just upload your files and get an instant price quote. With fast and affordable services, so you can bring your ideas to life without needing any expensive equipment at home. If you wanna check them out, their link is in the video description. By clicking the link, you help me to make more cool projects like this. Once again, a big thank you to JLC 3D Pre for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our project. So I install the cylinders. I use this high temp gasket maker to make a proper head gasket. I applied it evenly on both cylinders, let it cure for 15 minutes. Then I installed the heads and torqued everything to spec. With everything installed, this thing starts to look like a real engine. Now let's talk about ignition. This is an ignition coil. It's basically a transformer, it takes the 12 volts from our car battery and boosts it up to 1000 of volts, enough to create a powerful spark. Ok, but how does it know the exact moment when to spark? For that I made this simple distributor. Let me explain to you how it works. This is the cable that comes from the minus of the coil pack and this one goes to the minus of the battery. Every time we have a discontinuity in the circuit, the coil pack releases a spark inside the engine. 
to tie everything together, we have a lobe on a camshaft that's gonna control the exact time the spark is gonna go on. Well, now we have spark. But without fuel, we are not gonna have any combustion. Well, this little guy is gonna help us with that. This is a fuel injector from a 125cc mobile. It is gonna atomize the fuel, giving us a better air-fuel mixture. Okay, but how are we gonna control this thing? For that, we are gonna need a brain. Well, our brain is gonna be an Arduino Nano, acting like a ECU. Pair that with a cam position sensor and a small magnet on the camshaft, and you get the basic fuel injection system. Well, I hooked everything to 12 volts. Now let's see if the hull sensor registers the small magnet we have on the camshaft. If it does, a red LED should light up on the board. I've got the injector all wired up. Now let's see if we can hear the injector open and close. Now that we have our fueling system ready, it's time to print an intake that can house our fuel injector and both the intakes from the cylinders. So I designed and printed it out of PLA+, Plus, grabbed some hardware, installed the first intake on cylinder 1, tightened all the bolts and I tied everything together with the Y pipe that connects both the cylinders. Now let's see if the injector fits like a glove. We also have a throttle flap to control the air that goes in the engine and to make sure the air that enters the engine is clean, I added an air filter. This thing is giving us at least 5 horsepower. Guys, I got a real engineer coming in to see our engine. Let me put you right here. Stay there. Oh, hello sir. Yeah, come in, come in. Yeah, no, no. There he is. Meow. Let's see if our engineer is gonna approve the build. He acted very nonchalant, didn't even acknowledge the engine. He knows I have no idea what I'm doing here. We also need a name for him. Leave some name suggestions in the comments. But anyways, the engine is fully put together. I also fixed the coil packs, one on each side. There's one more there. I also installed the fuel line that goes into a fuel filter that connects to a fuel regulator and next to the fuel tank and the pump. Well, all that's left is to try to start this bad boy. Yep, you saw that right, the engine seized. So I started disassembling the engine to see what's wrong. I took the cylinders off, unscrew all the crankcase bolts and then Yep, the crankshaft isn't supposed to split up like that. To fix this, I drilled the keyhole between the crank cheek and the cheek pin. I installed the key and covered it in epoxy to make sure everything stays in place. All that was left was to put everything together and start testing again. Well, we had one combustion event, but that one single boom destroyed one of the heads. Let's take the head off to see what actually happened. This head is completely unusable, so I decided to print two new heads, but this time I printed them out of PLA and I also installed the sparks, the springs, the valves, so after putting everything together once again, we are ready for another round of testing. That's a lot of smoke. All of this smoke is a good sign. It tells us two things. We have good fuel delivery and a good spark. The only thing left for this engine to start is compression. And by rewatching the footage, I realized most of the smoke was coming from the inside of the crankcase. The only reason that would happen is due to bad rings. So guess what I did next? 
Ding ding, you are right, I disassembled the engine again. Took the piston pin off, removed the piston, I inspected the rings and they had no wear at all, so I chose a one size bigger o-ring and I installed them on the piston. Let's test the compression by hand to see how it feels. You can actually see the piston being pushed out by the compression. This is a really good sign. But while I had the engine disassembled, I noticed this. The crankshaft went loose again, so I had to redesign and reprint a better crankshaft. I designed all the mating parts with a hex shape, so we are not gonna have any slipping issues. After installing everything, it's time to give it another go. That was really close. Let's see what actually happened. Unfortunately, one of the camshaft was not installed properly and the belt slipped upon combustion. So I quickly fixed that and jumped into another testing session. Once again the crankshaft failed, another chick pin failure, but there was one more thing that was failing. And that thing was me. This project was not turning out as I expected and I started to lose hope. But then I remembered why I started this in the first place. Cause I was born for this, yeah! So I gave it one more try. So I grabbed the very last piece of material I had, I doubled the number of walls and I started printing another crankshaft. After the print was ready, I put everything back together and I was ready for another session of testing. There we have it guys, a V-twin 3D printed engine that actually started. To be completely fair, I couldn't get out the drill from the starter on the flywheel. So it did have a bit of help from the drill, but it sounded like it started. Let me know in the comments if this was a win or not. And if you think I should try again with a metal crankshaft. I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreons. If you would also like to see more of these projects, check my Patreon link in the video description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.